Previously, I made a video about market timing and how I think it's a bit of a futile exercise. And when I was doing research for that video, I came across an interesting phenomenon that dragged me into a rabbit hole filled with market microstructures and even conspiracy theories. So I thought it deserved its own separate video. I will go through what some call the overnight effect. It basically shows that almost all of stock market returns occur when the market is closed, when we're asleep. This sounds strange, right? I'll explain this phenomenon in more detail and what could be the cause of it, and most importantly, what takeaways we can get as retail investors. In the US, regular trading hours or stocks are between 9.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Afterwards, the market is closed and you have to wait overnight to start trading again. Now, if we take a look at any stock or ETF, we can break down the performance into these two parts, one overnight part and one intraday part. Doing this for SPY, which is an S&P 500 ETF, you can see that the vast majority of returns are explained what's happening overnight. And the same holds true for other markets outside of the US. You can see the same phenomenon almost everywhere except one country. And I will tell you which one later. This is not a newly discovered thing, but has been written about since the 80s. And researchers still seems to argue a bit whether or not this is a proper market anomaly to begin with. In finance, an anomaly is when we can persistently document price performance that deviates from what we would expect using our theoretical understanding of the market. On the face of it, a market anomaly contradicts market efficiency, which says basically that prices should reflect all information available. So what could explain the overnight? effect. Since it's more difficult to sell and hedge your position overnight, one could argue that investors are taking on additional risks overnight and therefore they should be compensated. So looking at the daily average or median, overnight returns are slightly higher than intraday ones while the standard deviation is lower. So if you see standard deviation as an okay proxy for risk, from a modern portfolio theory framework we don't really find an obvious explanation for the overnight effect here. And if you don't know what modern portfolio theory is or you'll need a reference pressure, I will link a video I made about that in the description. Another potential explanation could be that since basically all companies in the S&P 500 report their earnings either after the close or before the open. Any price impact that those earnings announcements have should show up in the opening price when the regular trading starts again, and thus impacting the overnight return. This was actually my humble guess when I first heard about this, that the earnings would explain this overnight return. An article posted on Alpha Architect agrees with this explanation to a certain extent. The article looks at months when there are more earnings being announced and argues that the overnight returns are a lot higher than intraday ones at these months. Uh, however, others disagree. There's another paper from 2008 where the authors are explicitly removing the days that have a lot of earnings announcements and this seems to not impact the results whatsoever. Other papers come to the same conclusion that earnings announcements are not what is causing this overnight effect. Another way you can test the earnings announcement explanation is to see if the same overnight effect holds for other asset classes. Asset classes such as bonds or commodities should not have their overnight return being solely driven by earnings announcements for companies. And checking both common bond and commodity ETFs, we can see that the same overnight effect still holds. So saying that the overnight effect is solely driven by earnings announcements for companies seems weak. Another explanation comes from Bruce Knutson. Knutson? Knutsen. He's a former quant at a hedge fund. Almost every year since 2016, Bruce Knutsen has been writing papers claiming that a group of quant hedge funds have for decades been manipulating the market in order to increase the value of their portfolios. In order to explain the details of this theory, we have to first talk about what's called market microstructure, basically how trades occur in the market. One can observe that stock market liquidity, which is the ability for you to convert your shares into cash without impacting the price, tends to be worse at the open. Thus, orders sent at the open tends to have a larger impact on the price than if you send the same order at the close. You can see this when looking at dollars traded during the day. More frequently, there will be larger orders near the close than at the open. So according to his theory now, if you are a hedge fund and you own a large position in Tesla and you want to push up the price, you would send new buy orders for Tesla at the open, since this is the time when that will have a bigger impact. It will push up the price. Then you will sell those newly traded shares at the close because you will have less impact and you will kind of get away with it. Doing this in isolation for one day is probably a money losing trade. But if you were to do it consistently over time, it will slow and slow and slowly push up the price of the stock. Now me personally, I don't buy into this theory whatsoever. As most conspiracy theories goes, it's always hard to prove anything. 
which is very convenient. Another more reasonable explanation could be that individuals tend to trade at the open while institutions trade at the close. The difference in liquidity could mean that retail buying tends to push up the opening price and increasing the overnight return. The overnight effect is actually most visible for stocks that are popular with retail investors. The investment advisory firm Elm Partners found that many of the stocks that experienced a large difference between overnight and intraday returns also had a high Google trend score, meaning that the stocks were frequently mentioned in the news, potentially attracting flows from retail investors. This tug of war between between individual investors that are pushing up the opening price to later have institutional investors over correcting the price later at a close could uh, explain the overnight effect. Remember I told you that there's one market who doesn't have this overnight effect and that market is China. Overnight returns on the Chinese stock market tends to be on average negative. Investors are actually prohibited from selling shares that has been purchased early in the day. Thus traders might require a discount for the opening price. Looking back at the potential explanations for the overnight effect, it is likely that there are more than one that plays a role in why it exists in the first place. But why does it persist? Looking at these plots, wouldn't you want to profit from this by buying at the close and then holding the stocks overnight and then go short when the market opens. If enough market participants made that trade, the overnight effect should disappear. Well, the main issue is transaction costs, since including modest assumptions about transaction costs into this strategy would basically destroy it since you have to trade every single day. Even for a more sophisticated trader at, let's say, a hedge fund that might be able to avoid impacting the market to still have a valid strategy after costs, it is likely that leverage needs to be involved for it to be worthwhile. And this could lead to large losses during times when the overnight effect does not hold. Looking at the rolling one year return difference in overnight and intraday, there are plenty of periods when the strategy would fail. These could be the reasons for why the overnight effect still persists. Actually, fun fact, uh, an ETF was launched in 2022 that tried to profit from the overnight effect, buying futures at the close and then sell them at the open. However, it was liquidated last year after lacking interest from investors and underperforming the S&P 400. Now, what can we take away from all this? If you are closing your position at the end of the day, it is likely that you are missing out on gains over the long run. Same holds true if you're doing excessive trading. Behavioral biases, biases. like overconfidence, herd mentality, and the false sense of control can make us to trade more than we should. Running the risk of underperforming a simpler buy and hold strategy that is invested both day and night. Again, I recommend you to watch my video about market timing if you want to learn more about this. But for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.